Hello everyone, I would like to present the developments in the data acquisition software since my last update. The software is now written in Python and has some more features. Let's do a quick walkthrough. First we are on the projects tab and there we have to fill out some fields. State who we are and state a sampling rate. You see the project browser with some of the latest runs I did. And if we fill out the description, the start button turns green and we could do a run now. But first let's see what other tabs we have. So this is the camera tab. There is a motion status indicator, some manual overrides and a camera settings pop-up. Here you can find parameters for the camera, for recording, for NDI output and for the motion detection. Good, let's connect the camera. The video looks a bit blurry, so I deactivate the manual focus and let the camera focus itself and then I activate it again. Okay, let's add some overlays now. First, just a normal text. I change the text size. Apply the settings, then I change the color to white and add another overlay, this time a timestamp. And now I add a sensor overlay. This is one of the predefined sensors I have and another one. Now you can see me testing the motion sensor. If a motion is detected, the status indicator gets red. Here we have the sensors tab. In the list you can see my pre-configured sensors from the last run. And on the top are three buttons to connect to different devices. You can edit each sensor independent of its type. And you can add more sensors, of course. For the Arduino device type, you can choose from the list that the master Arduino is responsible of. And for the Labjack type, you can choose from all ports that it has. I'm using the extended features ports. Here you can find two source code examples for the master and for the slave. To show you the other sensors tab, I have to disconnect from Arduino so that the port is free. This feature is designed for other devices with serial interfaces. Many of those have different ways to obtain the data. Different query characters or a little menu or multiple values that we would like to have. Some values may have other words or characters in front of it and so on. So with this sensor management you can define little sequences of actions that are iterated through in a loop and the published values can be assigned to virtual sensors. So in this case I get data from my Arduino in a different way. I send a command, wait for several milliseconds, read the data, pass it and then publish it, the values. This is the whole sequence that is looped. You can also test it step by step. The command R is sent, then we wait for 1.9 seconds, then we pass the data we get. We found it and now it can get published. Okay, I connect to the Arduino.
now we have to create a virtual sensor and assign the published value to it. Here I choose my created sequence and the published value. And it is working 21.2 degrees. But I remove it for now, we don't need it. Then we have the automation tab. Here users can also define sequences, but they are much more general and very powerful. Whole experiments and other things can be automated with it. At the moment, triggers can be time-based, for example, at a specific time or after x seconds or minutes. They can be sensor value based, for example, if a certain value is reached or if a value is smaller than x. Or they can be event based, for example, when a recording is started or when a motion is detected. Triggered actions can be commands sent to Arduino or to LabJack. Camera operations or system actions like show a message. In this case, I have a sequence to take a screenshot every minute and a sequence to show a message if the sensor K-Type 1 is over 30 degrees C. A more complex automation could be to take care of plants, like to refill water if the level is too low, ventilate if the humidity is too low, heat if it is too cold, play sounds if the value is too high and so on. Sequences can also run in a loop if the user wants to do that. At the bottom there's a little program to create a time-lapse video out of the snapshots. The colored buttons on the panel were to manage and collect data and the white buttons are to view and describe the data. So the dashboard is to view the incoming data, the status of the sequences and to have an eye on the camera. Data is only shown here when the run has been started. Then we have the graphs tab. As we have not yet started a new run, we see the data from the previous run as a time series. There are other graph types to choose from. Below is a small box with a little description and tips for each type. Depending on the chosen type, there are some settings below to select the sensors or change other things. Here is temperature difference. Rate of change. Moving average. Fourier analysis. Histogram. A box plot. and correlation analysis. And finally, there's the notes tab. Here, the user can put in thoughts and notes during or after a run. It is saved as HTML and provides basic HTML functionality. On the top is a header automatically inserted containing the project information. It is a template and can be changed.
there is a button to insert a screenshot of the graph from the grass top as it is looking at the moment. It can be inserted and changed in size. There is another button to insert a screenshot from the camera. But this is still the document for the old run. Let's start a new run now. New data is coming in as we can see on the dashboard. We can also see that the automation sequences are now active. Thank you for your attention.